For the first time in 145 years, the sport of college football will have a playoff, and it only seems it's been that long that the SEC has dominated the sport. They won seven of the last eight BCS national titles, but this year, the preseason number one, normally, seemingly, reserved for a team in the South is, but in geography only. Florida State's at the top of the poll and the sport, but you can't hold down the SEC for very long. Our next guest is acutely aware of that. He's Edward Ashoff. He covers the SEC for ESPN. Edward, big story, maybe the biggest in the league, is who will take over for A.J. McCarron at Alabama. Where do we stand on that? Well, I think right now it's really a, a two-guy race between Blake Sims uh, and Jacob Coker. And I think that right now Jacob Coker's swimming a little bit, which is natural. I mean, he just got on campus a little bit ago. Blake Sims has gone through this offense uh, under Lane Kiffin during this excuse me, during the spring, uh, and he's really zipped ahead. And, and I think surprised some people with how much he's kind of developed in the last few weeks. And, and he's ahead of Jacob Coker, it seems like. But the, the advantage that Alabama is going to have is that it doesn't have a very strong schedule to start the year. Uh, so I think you're going to see more of a two-quarterback system with Nick Saban. Uh, and that's perfectly all right. I mean, Jacob Coker has an arm that I think anybody would be impressed with. Uh, but Sims right now just knows the offense a little better, and it's going to come down to who plays better in these games to start the year. But having three games that are kind of tune-up, if you will, before that Florida matchup, which is going to be the best defense they face for a while, I think that they're, they're, they're pretty calm and collected with what they see, uh, and they have some time to kind of work on it. Wow, pretty eye-opening stuff, Edward. I think a lot of people had just, you know, Coker is going to have the job as a foregone conclusion, but maybe experience does mean something. We'll see. Another school that's got a quarterback battle between two guys is LSU. We've got Anthony Jennings returning, more experienced, and the true freshman, Brandon Harris. Where does that race stand? I think it's kind of the same. and It's sort of a, it was a foregone conclusion in the spring that Brandon Harris, the true freshman, would be the starter. And, and I think that, you know, skill-wise, he's probably a little more advanced. But obviously, you know, Jennings played a little bit last year, only five quarters but we've certainly seen more from him. I think that it's going to be kind of a touch-and-go situation as well. I think Jennings might be the guy who starts the season against Wisconsin, but I think that Harris is the guy of the future, and I think that he's going to be the one that all eyes are going to be on. I would be shocked if he didn't play in that first game, and I think he's got kind of a two-quarterback system as well in Baton Rouge. Uh, and and I'd, really, I, I'd, really, I'd really be surprised if by the middle of the season, it's not even a little earlier, Brandon Harris wasn't the guy. That's a lot of pressure, true freshman quarterback and maybe a true freshman running back in Leonard Fournette. Before I let you go, South Carolina opens the season at home against Texas A&M on the SEC Network Thursday night. Some mixed messages about a rib injury suffered by the Gamecocks running back, Mike Davis. So what is his status for Thursday? Well, I think we've seen this from a head ball coach before, <laughs> uh, a little bit of gamesmanship, but I, I think that Mike Davis is going to play. And, and, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's a very serious injury at all, uh, but being a running back and having any sort of rib injury, you're going to take hits. And I think that it's something to monitor as the season goes on, but, again, I'd be shocked if he didn't play in that opener. And one advantage they do have is they don't have to feed him the ball 30 times. They've got some manageable backups. I think Brandon Miles is a guy that people don't really talk about, but He's a tough runner, was a former walk-on. Sean Carson's really come along, might be a little bit more explosive now and shifty. So even if Mike Davis doesn't carry it a bunch of times in the opener, I, I think he'll be just fine. Now, old ball coach playing mind games. Nothing new there. Edward, thanks. We'll look for your work on the college football blog page on ESPN.com. Appreciate it.